Hi, I'm Philip Hundle, uh, and I'm an attorney. I practice condemnation, uh, eminent domain law, and I represent landowners. I am uh, trying something new today. Uh, as you can see, normally I, I'll have uh, you know my video camera set up, and 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 I'll record these either on site or or in my office. Today I'm trying a little bit something different. Um, please give me your feedback. Um, and behind me, <clears throat> so I'm using a Zoom meeting, I'm recording it, uh, and behind me are some photos from uh, a recent uh, case that I had uh, related to a center point uh, uh, power line that uh, it's, a, it's a large 345 kV line. And so, uh, so I've got the picture in the background. And the reason is because I'm going to uh, talk about another project that some of you may be uh, affected by. Uh, and it's a, a AEP project uh, down in San Patricio County near Corpus, actually between Sinton and Gregory. Uh, I call it Gregory Portland, but the town of Gregory uh, and Sinton. And, uh, and in that area, there are uh, approximately 10, 10 to 14 miles of a large line, just like the line that's behind me, uh, 345 kV line. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of demand, as everyone knows, in that area for uh, there's lots of industry. Uh, and so uh, with Corpus and, and the development there, and I know a lot going on with the uh, uh, LNG market there. And so uh, so there's a need for more power. And so uh, AEP has some some projects that have recently, um, you know, through the Texas PUC, they've submitted uh, their uh, applications. And so, uh, so a lot of this is in the process. So what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about that project and some of the things that as a landowner, uh, you should be con concerned about or at least uh, informed about. So uh, once again, behind me uh, is uh, a line that uh, the photos taken uh, just after these towers uh, were erected. Uh, now, so these towers, once again, very similar to what will be used in the AEP project. Uh, these towers are about 115 foot tall, uh, steel lattice towers. Um, the, the easement can range from anywhere from 150 feet to 100 and, uh, or 100 feet to 150 feet. Um, and so, uh, so depending on the type of structures that are needed, sometimes the structures, depending on the, the, the type of soil and the ground, um, the power line, power company can use uh, what they call mono po poles. And so then the, the uh, easement can be uh, slightly narrower, uh, but if the, it's these large uh, lattice towers, then between 100 and 150 feet. And that sometimes I've, I've seen some that are uh, even easements as wide as 200 feet. So, so with that, um, I wanna walk through some of the, uh, what we'll see, and I'll link these to the blog, uh, information that AEP has on their website uh, very helpful, I think, uh, very informative as far as a landowner. Uh, things to be, uh, be aware of, concerned about uh, when these towers are on your property um, and, and, and when you're approached by, as always, when you're approached by a right-of-way acquisition agent, a right-of-way agent, row agents, what they're referred to, you know, uh, these companies like Centerpoint and AEP, uh, they will hire these uh, right-of-way acquisition companies to go out and contact landowners uh, in order to hopefully you know, acquire easements voluntarily. If the landowners uh, and the right-of-way agent or you know, the power company doesn't reach an agreement voluntarily, then the power company is going to um, ultimately uh, proceed with the condemnation proceeding and, and, and take the easement that they're, they're initially wanting to negotiate uh, voluntarily with you with. So uh, just be aware of that, the process. I've got uh, the steps uh, attached to, as a link on the blog as well. So uh, knowing where you are in the process is always important, uh, whether you're at step one or step four uh, in the process, you know, ha has, uh, have you even received the initial offer yet, uh, an initial offer letter? Have you received the final offer letter? And you will because that final offer letter will have the appraisal. So look at the list. Uh, I've got that attached to the, to the blog and that'll help you know where you are in the process. These projects, as you all know, now this project, there's been public notice 
listed in the news, local newspapers. I believe, uh, I don't know what time in 2021 I can look back, but about mid 2021, somewhere around there, uh, you know, there was a, a posting of the potential routes. Now there's many, many routes. And so that's another thing. A lot of times uh, you as a landowner will be contacted because you are on one of those routes. Well, ultimately one route's chosen out of the 14 or 15 or 20 routes. And so you may or may not be affected. And so to kind of keep up with the progress or process of, you know, which route's chosen, is it, is it affecting me or is it not affecting me? And also you as a landowner, even if that power line doesn't, uh, or the, the, the possible route doesn't run on your property, uh, if you're within 500 feet of that power line, you will be also notified and contacted. And I think that's important because that, that shows the, the negative uh, effect or stigma of the line on, you know, not just the land that it's on, but on adjacent lands uh, next to the power line easement. So something very important to know uh, while we um, are in this process. Now I'd like to share a screen on the Zoom meeting uh, and, and show you all uh, some of the, uh, the, the documents. So I'd like to show you, this is, this is some of the information that's on the AEP website. Uh, as I mentioned, very helpful. Uh, you can scroll through it and see the uh, project uh, timeline. Uh, these timelines are often uh, not uh, exactly, um, uh, you know, not exact, uh, so to speak. So, so uh, it's just a more or less uh, time frame of the project. And then as we scroll up, uh, here's the, the map as we talked about, Taft, Gregory, uh, and then Sinton, uh, and here are all the various, as I mentioned, alternate or proposed routes or possible routes. Uh, so it talks about the existing transmission lines already in, located. As we know, uh, power companies oftentimes will prefer running power lines parallel with existing power lines. Uh, and so that's something that they always take into consideration. And then we have these other alternate routes. So um, and here's an uh, image, just like the photos behind me, uh, what these power line structures, we talked about the steel lattice uh, structures here, uh, you know, uh, approximately 130 feet tall, and they vary slightly. Uh, and then uh, the monopoles, as we mentioned, uh, is uh, 115 feet. So uh, good information. I'll link that to my website. Uh, and you can uh, you can get that information uh, directly from from my website. So any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to call an attorney that focuses and focuses on land litigation, specifically uh, representing landowners facing condemnation, eminent domain proceedings. So uh, with that, good luck. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it always is helpful to uh, uh, click subscribe uh, on the uh, on the link below on this channel. Thanks and good luck.